Welcome back collectors. This is the final video in my three-part series from 1989 released Hot Wheels. Every Hot Wheels car that Mattel produced in 1989 out for your review. This final part series is going to focus on the park and plate cars as well as promotional cars such as vehicles found in cereal boxes, other promotional such as the Ziploc cars, Getty gas station released vehicles when you purchase gas you got a Hot Wheel and we've got some set like track set exclusive cars also part of the 20 packs some of those Camaros that you saw there and of course the double barrel stunt set duo of racing cars exclusive to that one play set 1989 only and some very rare five pack play set cars not play sets but five pack of Hot Wheels where you got four regular cars and a few hard to find ones which you see here. So we're going to start out by looking at the park and plate. Now if you've never seen a park and plate this is what the packaging looked like. I've got two here from 1989 still in the package. The remainder of these park and plates are from 1990 and 1991. I have the full complete collections of those coming in future videos for those years and or perhaps a update on my entire park and plate collection. I'm not quite sure yet how I'm going to do these videos as there are just so many Hot Wheels being released from 1990 forwards in each year. I don't want to be doing multi-part videos all the time if I don't have to but uh, who knows we'll see. Let's start with the park and plates. We've got these 34 Fords, 57 Chevy with the Bowtie Tampo, one without 65 Mustang, some 80s Corvettes, the Cobra 427, the Camaro Z28, and a Nissan 300ZX, Ferrari Testarossa, Porsche 959, and of course these cars would fit in those little display boxes, this clear acrylic lids on them that would come off, so you could actually stack them all together if you wanted to and they each had a license plate as you saw. We've got the Soul Air CX-4 and the Thunder Streak comprising all of the park and plate cars for 1989. I do have a few variations that I'm aware of that I'm missing specifically with those Porsches and the Ferraris. I'll discuss those and values of all these cars relative rareness as this video unfolds. The two cereal box cars, uh, we've got the XT3 and mm, Tricar X8, that's that blue one there. Interesting story on those cars as well, kind of a failed uh, promo for Mattel as these cars were found in cereal boxes, they often punctured through the baggie that they came in, these were baggy release cars only, and that is because look how pointy these cars are, so often they were just rustling around in the cereal. In the five packs, we've got the 63 split window, quite a rare car, and the fire chaser, fire chief on the side. One of these cars is extremely rare, and that's the one still in the packaging that you can see. It's not original packaging. This is a car I obtained from an auction, the Larry Wood Collection. So those were for sale for a while. There's still a few left on eBay. Um, very rare car. We'll talk more about that in a moment. We've got the Hot Bird, another Camaro Z28 from the Double Barrel Stunt Set, and the Blown Camaro. I have all six variations that I am aware of. Some extremely rare cars in there. We'll talk more about those as well. And from the Getty Gas Station Collection. These cars were released as well in 1990 and 91, so there's a lot more Getty Gas Station cars to come. But we've got the Camaro Z28, for 1989 Ferrari Testarossa custom Corvette convertible and another uh, mm, what's that one called I forget we'll figure that out in a moment and just uh, some background fun here more cars from the park and plate these ones are some extremely rare cars you may find them on eBay here and there but the asking price is quite often well into the hundreds of dollars per car and uh, in some cases some of these cars cost me a lot of money when I bought them. A lot of money. Hundreds of dollars. 
So very, very hard collection to complete as far as the parking plates. And, uh, well, let's talk more about everything as we go here. So for the parking plate 34 Ford, this is a pretty easy car to obtain. Note that these are not the high rakers, which we've seen high raker chassis in the past where the back axle would pop down. That does not happen for the 89 release. Um, supposedly the version with the bigger back wheel was the harder car to find. Note this one has a smaller back wheel. That's the only difference between those two. But I've just checked eBay and I can find both of them pretty easily for around $20 asking. Then we've got the 57 Chevy. My experience, the one with the bow tie and the 57 Chevy Tampo is the harder car to find. Uh, I don't want to assign a value to that because I did see a couple for sale. They're in lots though, so like groups of other cars. But I did find this one was the easier one to find on its own when I was collecting these. And the 65 Mustang, pretty easy to get. It's got the nice opening hood. The 80s Corvettes, two variations here. Nice opening hood as well. One variation has a red piece of luggage in the back, under that back window. And the other one has a black piece of luggage. The black piece of luggage car is much harder to find. Quite a bit rarer than this red baggage or luggage version. The AC Cobra 427. Nice heavy casting. One of the harder cars to get at a decent price, but still obtainable. The Camaro Z28. This is an extremely difficult variation to get with the black tampo. In 1990 and 91, it would come out with a purple tampo replacing black. Same wheels and everything else the same. Very easy car to find. An extremely rare variation I have not been able to locate has the ultra hot wheels. So same as what you see on those cars there, that Corvette anyways. If I could find one of those, I would love to add that to my collection. Continuing into park and plate, the Nissan 300ZX with its opening doors, gold hot one wheels. This is, uh, you know, kind of a tough car to get at a reasonable price. There are two variations I'm aware of I've not been able to find. One has an unpainted metal base, and another one has the same car as this, all white, but with a red interior. I've not been able to find that car. I imagine it would be quite pricey if it did come up. Ferrari Testarossa. There's three variations. I've only been able to get two of them in all my searching. One with the red and gray interior. The other one with the tan and gray interior. Apparently there's one that has a tan and white interior. I don't even have a picture of this, but uh, I do know of that one through my old researching days on the old Hot Wheels Collectors.com website, which is no longer around. And for the Porsche 959, I've got three fairly easy variations to get here. I have found that this version with the blue interior is the easiest car. It has a blue tint window. Second easiest, and these are like five, ten dollar cars usually. Blue tint window, black interior. They all have metal bases. This one here has the black interior with clear windows. It's quite hard to find. There is also versions with black wall wheels and one with a tan interior. We're just going to scroll up over to the computer here. Uh, these are going to be kind of grainy images, but there's the cars I'm missing. Tan interior Porsche 959. And, uh, nope, not that one. Where's the black wall version? Uh, there's, the, there's the Nissan with the unpainted base. And there, uh, where's the one with the red interior? Red interior Nissan. And the black wall Porsche right there. So I'm missing that car. These are extremely hard cars to find though. There are not a lot of them out there. And they were kind of a premium priced car back in the day, I'm pretty sure. So uh, anyways, we'll move on. We've got the Solair CX-4. And uh, we've got the black tint window version here. And the blue tint window version. I think these cars are both pretty much the same as far as rarity goes. And this one is a very cheap one to get. The Thunder Streak. So that's uh, basically it for the parking plates in 1989. And actually, I just noticed I've got a price tag on this one. Let's see what it went for back in the day. Toys R Us. Oh, not that premium. $1.99. Toys R Us. May she rest in peace for the United States anyways. We still got them here in Canada. But uh, anyways, that's another story in itself. 
There's a second version of that Camaro with the black tint or black uh, paint tampo. And now we'll move on into the Getty gas cars. Like I said, these came as a promotional item when you bought a certain amount of gasoline from Getty gas stations. And they're all metal cars, quite heavy. The name of this car is still eluding me. I think it's just the F3. Something, it's a short name, doesn't actually say on the bottom what it is. So, uh, I could easily find that on my computer here in a moment, which I probably should do. And let's just do that. Let's just get that out of the way, just in case you're looking for that car. Two more cars while we're just looking at for 1989. I don't have, I've seen these come up once for sale. Uh, promotional, Christmas promotional, 57 Chevy, Happy Holidays in Chrome and white. I saw the chrome one come up for sale a couple of years ago and uh, it sold for $1,500 loose. So pretty crazy pricing. Um, I'm not seeing... There it is. What have we got there? The Shadow Jet. Shadow Jet. That's the car I was looking for. Anyways, back to the cars and not the computer. Uh, over to the cereal box cars. We talked about those ones. Pretty... Uh, Pretty easy to find. This one's a lot harder to find actually than any of the other cars. There are other purple uh, XT3 cars out there, but they don't have this black, orange, and white flame paint job. Instead, they have a red, yellow, and white flame paint job on the sides, which is a different car, but otherwise looks very similar. And then for the Ziploc promotional cars, not really sure how this promotion worked. I guess if you bought enough Ziploc bags, maybe there's a mail away. The lighter green car is the common one. Very hard to find is this dark green plastic version. That car set me back, I think, about $100 to get back in the day when I got it. And we're going to save my favorites for last. That's those blown Camaros. So we're going to go over here, check out those cars right there from the double barrel stunt set. Both of these cars, quite hard to, to get at a, a decent price. They used to be extremely hard to find but it seems more people know about them now, possibly from the video reviews such as this, but they're still sometimes, you know, $50 in decent condition. I think I've paid upwards of $100 a car in some cases for these, and uh, they did not come with my play set that you see in the background here, so oftentimes collectors would take the cars out of the play set, and uh, so I had to obtain the play set separately from those two cars. And then we've got the five pack cars. So we've got the 63 split window Corvette. Also, you know, not a high raker. And that car, I think I spent about $30 on. It's a hard car to find. 89 release only. The Fire Chief car, also from a five pack. Well, this was the uh, easy car to find. It has a black interior. Not an expensive car to get at all, but to find one with the tan interior. Super, super difficult. Uh, I've never seen it before, except for this particular car, which cost me $225. And uh, very important to check that the rivets are original when you're spending that kind of money on these cars. And the fact that it came from the Larry Wood collection probably added a bit of a price boost to it, which wasn't necessary for me, but it was necessary to add that car when I found it. So uh, I probably will end up taking it out of the plastic at some point. But we won't do that today. The blown Camaros, well, they came from this set, the G-Force, which you can see was a fairly simple stunt set. Came some plastic uh, SUVs, it looks like Chevy Blazers. I don't have this set, this is just an advertisement on the back of my double barrel play set. And uh, to find that set's pretty easy, but again, to find it with that car in the box, quite difficult. The car that is pictured hurtling through the air is Got the ultra hot wheels, the purple tampo around Camaro, as you can see right there, a tan interior, and clear windows. So that car is exactly the car in that picture. But there are other variations. There's one with a red interior, same otherwise, and one with black wall wheels, a red interior, still with the purple in the Camaro paint job. And even harder vehicles to find. Here's one with the orange around the Camaro. See, under IROC and Camaro, it's now orange instead of purple. Blackwell wheels, red interior. Got one here with the ultra hot wheels, same car otherwise. And the absolute hardest car to find. 
the gray interior, blue tint windows, ultra hot wheels, and purple. That car, I think, also cost me around $150. I did see an entire group of these vehicles just sell last week on eBay for $150. US uh, I'm sure that if I had bid on that, it would have gone up a lot higher, but I definitely don't need duplicates of cars at that price range. So, someone got a good deal. Let me know in the comments if you're that person. I'd love to hear about that. That would just be funny. Because those cars collectively have probably cost me near $500 to get with shipping and everything over the years. And literally took me a long time to get them. So that finishes up the 1989 three-part collection. Uh, coming forwards will be the 1990 cars. Up on the wall here, we're just kind of looking at the whole wall but I've got lots of 1990 cars lots more promotional cars parking plates and some more really cool cars that come out in the 1990s the super California customs for example right there and of course the regular California customs there's another Larry Wood very rare Ferrari Testarossa we're gonna be looking at all these cars and I'm going to try and figure out how to make this video so that uh, we can kind of group maybe cars together that were released just over a couple of years such as the parking plates and uh, there where are we looking here parking plates yeah so there's a whole bunch more parking plates from 1990 and uh, there's those purple tampo Camaros which are pretty easy to find not so with the ultra hot wheels though the gold hot one wheels were always easier to find and just lots of awesome cars coming out very rare cars all the way around Got some more Getty uh, gas station cars there. And uh, like I said, lots of promotional cars. Into the 1990s, Hot Wheels had totally ramped up. And uh, 1992 was Mark, it was 1993, it was the 25th anniversary of Hot Wheels. So lots and lots more Hot Wheels coming out. And uh, stay tuned for more types, uh, more videos of this type. And uh, feel free to leave a comment or question. Smash the old like and subscribe button if you like this video and want to see more. Thank you very much and uh, happy hunting.